Alright, create a BTR curve, rotate it just like this, and then apply the scale and rotation with Ctrl A. In edit mode, move the vertices around until it looks like a pot that's been cut in half. Now for the cool part, add a screw modifier, and this is the result. I'll just move and scale the handles up here to make sure there's no overlapping geometry. If you're not happy with the shape, then you can add more vertices and move them in any way you like. Now we'll complete the look with two more modifiers, solidify and edge split. Solidify will add width to the pot and make sure it isn't paper thin, and edge split will remove the weird shading along the rim of the pot. I'm not particularly happy with the way this pot looks, so I'm going to subdivide it and add a bit more detail. We're going to focus on the material now. Let's go to textures.com and choose a nice image. I'll put a link to this image in the description if you also want to use it. Let's go and create a new material, we'll call it Pot. Head over to the Shader Editor. With the Node Wrangler add-on enabled, press Ctrl T on your shader and import your texture. Using the mapping node, I'm going to resize the texture so it better fits the geometry of the pot. I'm going to make the neck longer as well, because it's best to make sure the model goes and fits the texture than the other way around. This is a simple yet quite powerful material. We're going to need two mixed RGBs, two color ramps, and an object info node. The heart of this is the object info node. To demonstrate what it does, I'm going to set this color ramp to be red on one side, blue on the other side, and green in the middle. When I plug the random output into the factor and then plug the color into the base color, I can then duplicate the object and get a random color every single time. Now let's take our other color ramp and use this to create a mask. We'll plug this in back into the base color. Our goal is to adjust the color ramp so that the white parts remain white and the gray parts turn black. Now let's use the mix RGB node. We'll plug the color ramp into the factor, and we'll plug the texture and rainbow color ramp into the remaining slots. If the result doesn't look right, then swap the bottom two nodes. Now we'll take our other mix node and use it like this. The result is a pot that will randomize its color every time it is copy and pasted. I think the rainbow colors might be a bit too vibrant, so I'm going to dull them down into some more muted tones. Let's also use a bump node to add some additional detail. We'll set the strength to 0.4 to make sure it isn't too strong, and then drag the texture in through a color ramp. And there you have it, you have a pot. But that's not it, this technique has a lot of uses, and you can even create other things such as cups, or vases, or bowls. You can even think outside the box and create something like a top hat. Thanks for watching. If you found this helpful, please consider donating to the Patreon linked in the description.